Welcome back to Scale Out of Guys Workbench. Today we're going to be assembling the Atlantis 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Brome. Uh, I had a unboxing video earlier. Uh, in case you missed it, I'll put a link in the description for that video uh, so you'll see what was inside the box. Um, as you can see here, I've got the body sort of just kind of press fit together it's not glued or anything like that I still have some cleanup to do uh, around the edges and the seams here and there's still sprue marks on the other side I have to clean up um, I just kind of press fit that body together so I could um, put the interior tub together and I'm going to see if I can lay that in uh, before I do any painting um, just so I, you know, can see if I can paint it and then assemble it. And that's kind of my goal. Uh, hopefully this will work out the way I have it envisioned. Um, I'm going to take you guys along on the ride. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of my subscribers and all of the great comments I've been getting uh, on all my videos. I'm still a fairly young channel, so I very, very much appreciate everything you guys are doing out there, and I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, let's get started. Okay, fellas, uh, I'm back after using the old scotch tape. I've got the tub all taped together just as a test fit. I've got the body all cleaned up and put together. It's uh, held together right now with two pieces of tape on the inside. I just want to test fit this interior tub um, to see if it will fit inside this body when it's assembled. There are two locating holes on the bottom and two locating pins. You probably can't see them, but there's one here, one here on the chassis. So let's, let's uh, test fit this here and see if it'll go together. Um, if it'll go together, if it'll pop right down in there, with, even with a little bit of effort, I'll at least know that the uh, body and everything can be put together after it's painted and then I can just paint the body and uh, yeah. That's right down in where it's supposed to go. And then the dash goes up here. And then uh, the roof, I'm gonna have to modify this in some way. Maybe put something uh, over here on the ends so that I can uh, attach those to the body a little bit better. I know that the window, the clear window frame is supposed to uh, be able to uh, hold this and hold this roof in place but um, it just looks a little weak to me um, trying to glue that to the body um, I don't know I'll we'll have to play that game as when we get there in the meantime because I've got the body all cleaned up ready to go for paint um, and the interior just pops right in there all I have to do after I get the interior in there is I'm going to have to put the top of the dash in after I get the interior in. So um, I can get to priming this now and wish me luck.
All right, guys, I got the tires and wheels done. And uh, I had to be a little unconventional. And what I mean by that is, well, the kit comes with white wall uh, decals. But in my attempt to put it on, this is what I got. I don't know if I can pick it up here. Not only did it twist, but it broke into several pieces. It wouldn't lay down because there's grooves on the side of the tire. Well, thank goodness that they put grooves in there. Now, I filmed this while I was doing it, but for some reason my camera went into portrait mode and it's not going to show up uh, properly, that, that section of the video. So what I did is I just took a white gel pen and in that groove, whoop, slippery little devil, in that little groove there's two little raised lines and right in the middle I just took this white gel pen and scooted it around in that little groove until I had a white wall. There's also little decals they go for your center center of your hubcaps. Well, in my attempt to put one on there, it also disintegrated. So, you've probably seen me use this paint here before, this transparent glass paint. I just put a drop of that red paint in the center of every one of those hubcaps. Now I'm still going to have to go through and do some touch up with that white gel pen, but for the most part these tires are done. So that's how you get around that. These decals in this kit I'm discovering that they aren't worth the effort because they're brittle and they don't lay down properly. I've had problems with decals in the past, but nothing like this. Even the, an old uh, Itallery Iveco diesel truck that I did, that I had that kit for 15, 16 years before I even opened it decide, and decided to build it. And the decals were still better in that than they are in this kit. And this kit's only about a year old. So that's how we get around that. Let's get on with the rest of the build. Okay, fellas, I've got the, de the bottom detailed. And I'm getting ready to seal the body, the top and lower sections together. I have a plan for this. I don't know how it's going to turn out. In my mind, it's going to turn out fantastic. But for some reason, I have my doubts. I'm trying to keep a positive outlook on this because I know this is going to be difficult. So here's what I propose to do. I'm proposing to put it together by applying glue to the inside at certain points. And as that glue cures, I'm going to have this kind of pressed together just with my fingers until it tacks up and that should close that gap on the body side and from that point when it's all finished I'm going to apply another clear coat and I'm going to also apply some bare metal foil to this seam so you don't see any gaps that might be there so Let's get on that and let's see how it turns out.
Well, that's one side done. Let's get on to the next. Now, when I put this together for painting, I put it together using plain old masking tape. It's just enough to hold it together for painting. Now I've got to get these sides put together. Now in the directions it says to put your interior in there then put the top on it. But if you do that then it restricts you from doing these sides and getting it you know somewhat decent looking at least. Like I said, I'll be putting bare metal foil over this seam here, so you won't exactly be able to see it. After all, there is a chrome strip that runs right down the side of the car here anyway, so the bare metal foil will help conceal that. And I'm using crazy glue because it tacks up a little faster than uh, cement glue, you know, plastic cement glue, the red tube. And just push it together, hold it, hold it for a little bit, and it stays right together. Yeah, it's looking good so far. Now down here, this uh, there's a piece of trim that goes in there that holds that all together. I may have to put a little back here. I should have started back here to begin with. There, that snaps in just like that. And the last little bit I got to do is right here in the front. Go through the wheel well. It's not exactly an easy one to get to. Hopefully that's enough because I can't really squeeze the tube to get any more out. And I don't want to put a whole lot on there anyway because it will ooze out of the crack there and that's not what I'm trying to do. Just hold it there for just a little bit. body sealed together. Now I had a, a little bit of a painting issue. I had to strip the interior but as you can see the floor plan just drops right in there and uh, shouldn't have any trouble getting that interior put together and put inside. Then I can put the roof on and uh, yeah that'll look all right. Okay, uh, on to putting the wheels and tires on. You, you can see that I have those together. I showed you that already. And another coat of clear and we should be good to go. All right, fellas, I had a change of heart on the color. I didn't like the pale pink that I had put on there. So I came across this can of the Krylon... Um, gloss hot pink and I decided to change it to this color so this is the color that we're gonna go with and uh, I think it looks a lot better uh, maybe I'm wrong but that's the way it is let's continue on with this build I'll see you in a little bit
Welcome to the final on this 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Brome. It took me a bit over uh, two years to get to this point, mostly due to my inability to choose a color. This thing has gone through three different body colors between then and now, and here we are. Now, I suspect that this kit comes from a very old mold dated sometime around 1957 due to the 1957 stamp on the chassis and it was I believe intended to be a promo kit for the actual car although I could be incorrect this is a fairly challenging kit to build due to its two-piece body and three-piece roof not to mention the multi-piece interior and it's a curbside so it, it it should have been a little easier but it really wasn't so like i said i started this kit about two years ago right after i did an unboxing video and uh i'll leave a link for that video in the description box below in case you haven't seen that yet so since then it's been sitting on the shelf of my workbench collecting dust and I've also even misplaced the box that's why I've got a different background usually I have a box back there so there we go <laughs> now getting the chrome that runs along the rocker panels getting that put on there was fun sure I could have painted that part with silver uh, paint but it wouldn't have had the same visual effect as the bare metal foil has and I don't really mess around with chrome uh, pen paints um, as they tend to get a little bit weird when they get handled too much so I decided to cover each side with a solid piece of bare metal foil for its entire length it also helps that I kind of like bare metal foil so that's what I went with I think that the roof is one of the most challenging parts, besides the body, to get into place and keeping them in place is probably the second most challenging. Uh, for the roof, there isn't a frame per se, so the main structure comes from the front and rear windows, which have to be glued, taped, and pinned into place with weight until the glue is set. It wasn't horrible, but it did present a bit of a challenge. The roof is also supposed to be silver in color to represent stainless steel and it was that color for a little bit but like the body it went through a couple of color changes as well and I ended up uh, with white to match the pink and white interior. All in all I think that this build turned out really nice though it's not a muscle car in any way but it still is a great American car. Well, this one is finally done. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, why not go ahead and click that thumbs up button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to share my content, which helps my channel grow. If you have any questions or comments, please write those in the comment section below and I'll be happy to respond as soon as possible. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, or you can drop me a line at scaleautoguy at gmail.com. And if you want more videos like this one, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you'll be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching Scale Auto Guy's Workbench, and I'll see you on the next build.